Hi everybody, it's Deborah from PeopleLovingAnimals.com. Thanks so much for tuning in and watching my video today. Today's video is called, How Do You Introduce Two Dogs? We are on my website, PeopleLovingAnimals.com, and we're going to use this article on my website called, How Do You Introduce Two Dogs? How to Introduce Your Dog Calmly for today's video. I'm going to give you a link to this article in the description below the video. I'm also going to give you links to anything that we talk about during the video. I'll give you the links to in the description box. And I'm also going to give you a link to go ahead and subscribe to my dog lovers email list. If you are subscribed there about once a week or so, you'll get um, an email from peoplelovinganimals.com all about the care, support, health, and training of dogs and puppies. So I would love to have you on board as a subscriber to the email list. Also, if you're not already a subscriber to this YouTube channel, I would love to have you on board. I do a video at least once a week, um, not just about dogs, but about cats as well and I would love it if you would give the video a like if it is helpful to you at all it really helps youtubers when you do that so again thanks so much for tuning in and watching my video let's go ahead and get started how do you introduce two dogs how do you introduce your dog calmly? Uh, one of the worst experiences as a dog owner when you're out for a walk with your dog is when another dog approaches and you panic. <laughs> uh, whether it's your dog who gets too excited or aggressive or, it's, or if it's the other dog, introducing two dogs to each other can be a very stressful situation. Um, how do you introduce two dogs? You know, Several years ago, before I knew anything about dog training, I had a little um, wiener dog. Actually, she was a mix. She was part dachshund and I believe part chihuahua. I'm not sure because she was like a little dachshund, but she didn't have the pointy nose dachshund face. She had more of a chihuahua face. Anyway, um, her name was Maggie, and she was a scrapper. I had such a terrible time with her. Anytime she would see any other dog, and it didn't matter if it was a big dog or if it was a small dog, Dog, she would just like ferociously attack and if she could get to the dog she would actually attack the other dog now luckily for her she attacked many very large dogs in her lifetime in the time that I had her I had her for 11 years um Luckily for her, the big dogs never fought back. <laughs> you know, any one of them could have killed her. Uh, but luckily, they just didn't. They would just, like, push her down, push her away. And, and luckily, she never got hurt. And she never managed to actually hurt any other dogs other than, I think, startling them and so forth. But um, it was a terrible time. And it was a terrible thing for me because anytime we were out for a walk, if I saw another dog, even on the horizon, I would have to pick Maggie up and carry her. And I always had to be on the the alert for if we were going to see another dog because I knew that Maggie's reaction would be so so terrible so I hope that this video helps with for anyone who has a Maggie <laughs> okay um, now the first thing you need to determine in this situation is is it aggression or is it excitement um, sometimes it's hard to tell what a dog is feeling or thinking. The first thing you should do is read an article called Reading Dog Body Language. I'm going to give it to you in the description box. And it really outlines and describes all the different body languages for a dog and how you can look at a dog and be able to have good indicators whether are they being aggressive or are they just excited. Or are they scared? Do you know? Because you really need to be able to discern that um, and figure out if it's okay to approach another dog. Um, even if you don't have a dog, if you're not walking your own dog, just as a person, just out walking in the neighborhood, going to a park. If, if you're approached by a dog, you really should educate yourself a little about dog body language so that you can... It will help you to decide whether the dog is aggressive or whether the dog is just excited. So I'm going to give you that article in the description box to read um, called Reading Dog's Body Language. Um, the most common behaviors that indicate aggression rather than excitement are growling, of course. If the dog is growling, if they're showing their teeth, obviously. If their hair is standing up, if they're rearing up on their back legs, you get the picture. Those are very obvious body language for the dog that's being aggressive, but other body language can be uh, more subtle. Okay, so I really encourage you to go ahead and um, read that article and get yourself educated on that. That's step number one for you to know, okay? 
Uh, what should you do in this situation? You have three options available to you when you find yourself in this situation. And we're talking about where you're out with your dog and there's another dog, okay? Or, you know, if somebody comes to your dog or to your house with a dog, or if you go to somebody else's house, you have your dog with you and they have a dog. Okay, when when your dog is confronted with an, with another dog, this is the situation that we're talking about. Um, but before I explain those, you must realize that you've, you must have a plan of action in place before you head out with your dog. Um, and you must already have established yourself as the pack leader with your dog. If you haven't done that, then this um, and virtually any other behavioral issues you have with your dog will be quite unmanageable. I'm going to give you an article called How to Become the Pack Leader. I'm going to give you that in the description box. I do suggest that you go and read it and you find out what a pack leader is um, and what it means. It doesn't have anything to do with aggression. It doesn't have anything to do with dominance all that being a pack leader is is it's teaching your dog that you are the one that makes all the decisions so he doesn't have to that really is what it is and there are several steps that you can take that will teach your dog that concept okay because you know if your dog doesn't see you as the pack leader and the and your dog thinks that he has to make all his own decisions it it turns into a very stressful situation um where the dog is under stress they feel like they have to protect you they have to feel like they have to protect themselves they have to protect the family they have to protect the yard they have to protect the food dish they have to make decisions they're the one in charge you know and this is where this weird aggression comes from where they they panic or they they get aggressive every time another dog approaches or they have a stroke every time the doorbell rings okay all that stuff it all has to do with the pack mentality of a dog and so like i say i'm going to give you a link to that article how to become the pack leader and i want you to read that and get an understanding of what that's like so you really need to understand that concept and like the article says have that in place and have a plan in place before you head out with your dog okay don't just head out and say okay we're gonna try this today we're gonna try that today have these things in place that these are really the, the first steps in controlling this or any other uh, dog behavior issue that you're having Okay, so what are your options? We said there were three options in this situation. Um, the three options when you are walking your dog and another dog approaches are first, approach the other dog. Your first option is to go ahead and approach the other dog while your dog is calm, and he will be, if you have established yourself as the pack leader, your dog will be calm. Um, approach the other dog on the leash. Uh, stay silent as you walk your toward dog toward the other dog and let them meet stay out of it don't get upset when you already have a calm situation let them meet each other that's your first option your second option is to stay away um, your second option is to not approach the other dog just stay away using your gut instinct is going to be um, your best your best bet if the evidence indicates that you should just walk on past uh, there could be a number of reasons for this maybe you don't have much time that day so you don't want to take the time to calmly introduce your dog you know um, to the other dog or maybe the other dog dog is too aggressive or maybe one or both of the dogs look unsure maybe they're um, displaying aggressive behavior maybe they're really old maybe they look scared any one of these reasons um is a good reason to walk away my mother always said when in doubt don't so if you have apprehension for whatever reason your best bet is to follow your gut um, and another reason uh, for walking away is to show your dog that he doesn't necessarily have to meet and sniff every dog on the walk. Again, you're establishing yourself as pack leader. If, if you decide you're going to go and approach that dog, that's fine. But if you decide you're not approaching that dog, it is up to you. It's not up to your dog. Okay, so especially if your dog likes other dogs and they like you know they go crazy every time they see another dog that's just another good habit to get into sometimes you go and meet the other dog sometimes you don't 
Uh, your third option is to let your dog decide. Um, your third option is to calm your dog down, let him decide whether he wants to approach the other dog. Uh, the point of this is to show your dog that once he's calm, good things can happen. Um, he'll be allowed to make decisions and he'll be able to do more things like play with the other dog if he chooses. Um, that's a general theme in dog training and um, particularly in pack leader training that your dog, you have to set up a scenario in your dog's life where he gets nothing if he's not behaving. Do you know what I mean? It sounds kind of harsh, but the dog has to have a constant repetition of if I'm calm, I get to do this. If I'm not barking, I get to do this. If I'm not whining, I get to do this. Do you know what I mean? Like constant cause and effect, cause and effect. So if you can, if your dog is calm, if you're out for a walk and your dog is calm and you see another dog and your dog wants to go and meet him, okay, you let him go and meet him. But if you're out on the walk and your dog sees the other dog and he starts acting like a, an idiot, you don't let them introduce the other dog. The dog will put it together, cause and effect, cause and effect, okay? So there's a whole lot more, obviously, to dog training in that, but the basic concept is always the same, no matter what um, issue you're, you're dealing with, is to be the pack leader for your dog, you be the decision maker, and you constantly create a situation for your dog where when he is behaving well, good things happen for him. Okay, whether he's allowed to go meet another dog, whether he's allowed to have a treat, the whole thing, okay? So which option, option is right for you? Um, all three options are correct choices. It is up to you to evaluate the situation and decide what's appropriate at that moment. Um, young, younger dogs usually need a bit more calming than older dogs uh, when another dog approaches, and taking the time to do this training with them will pay off in the long run. Again, it is crucial that you learn how to be the pack leader that your dog wants you to be. I give you a link to another article um, if you want to have control over your dog. Avoid this fatal mistake. One of the biggest mistakes that people make um, regarding this issue and absolutely any other dog training issue is rewarding bad behavior. Um, for example, if your dog begins barking when he sees another dog and you walk him right over to meet the other dog, you're rewarding his bad behavior. He shouldn't be allowed to go and meet the other dog until he's calmed his ass down. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? So if he's bark, 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 and you, oh, you got to go meet the other dog. You know, you're number one, you're letting him be pack leader. You're letting him be the decision maker. But you're also rewarding his bad behavior. Um, and that will likely lead to his barking increasingly. Um, he'll not only be barking more and more on the walks, but he'll begin to see barking as a way to get what he wants. So never reward your dog when he's behaving badly. If he's barking, if he's snarling, if he's whining, if he's um, being aggressive, if he's jumping on you, um, all these things, never let that result in a good thing happening for your dog. Always wait until that behavior is under control before you reward them with whatever it is they're wanting okay and in this case you're rewarding them with them wanting to go and meet the other dog he can go and meet the other dog when he's calm see that's kind of the the concept um, all dogs can learn how to be calm when they see other dogs. It just takes a little bit of know-how by their owners to turn a potentially bad situation into a smooth, calm, enjoyable experience. Where can you get help? If you've been here on my channel before, you know I always recommend Doggy Dan. He owns a dog uh, training website called The Online Dog Trainer. I'm going to give you the link to that um, in the description box. I'm going to give you a link to... Um, my full review of Doggy Dan um, in the description box. It's called the Online Dog Trainer. It has more than 250 step-by-step -step videos about training dogs. And um, what it is, is Doggy Dan, you're actually watching videos of Doggy Dan go into people's houses and train dogs. Okay, that's what it is. So, for example, if you have this issue, then you're going to want to watch Doggy Dan's videos about how to introduce two dogs, and you're actually going to be able to see him doing it. Uh, so in my mind, it's the best dog training there is because you're seeing a professional dog trainer actually do it. So to me, it's the best way to learn how to do stuff. He is also a um, behavioral specialist. 
Um, Doggy Dan is famous for his five golden rules of becoming the pack leader. I'm going to give you the link to my review that talks about that. And um, those are the steps that I was telling you about. There are steps that you can take to teach your dog that you're the pack leader, that you're the decision maker. And that helps with virtually every um, dog behavior issue that there is. Okay. Um, uh, let me just um, show you a couple more things this article in this article if you decide to click in here and read this article I'm giving you um, a video of doggy Dan actually introducing two dogs okay that's what this video is so you can click on the article go in here go ahead and watch this video so see doggy Dan is at their house he's working with their dog and he's introducing um, these dogs so you get to actually you actually get to watch a professional dog trainer do it. So let me tell you about pricing. Um, Doggy Dan offers a three-day, $1 trial of his website. So if you sign up, you pay $1 and you get three whole days um, to go in and watch as many videos as you want. Now, during that three days, you have access to the entire website. It's not just some limited, you know, trial thing. You have access to the whole website for um, for three full days for a dollar so you can go in and watch as many videos as you can within those three days and um, get a lot of help with whatever issue and it's all broken up by issue whatever issue you're having you can watch a video about that um, now after um, the three days if you want to continue on and you see there's more training that you want to watch or whatever it's $37 a month and then I think you get a deal well I, I know you get a deal if you purchase a six month membership um, then it works out to be less than $37 a month I always recommend that if you have a puppy um, if you have a new puppy <laughs> You're going to need the six-month membership because, you know, there's so many things that you have to teach a puppy. But if you only have a couple of issues or you just have this particular in, um, issue that you tuned into my video to find out about today, go on there, pay the buck, spend three days, and watch, watch Doggy Dan's videos about this, and you'll get the help that you need. All right. Um, let me see if there's anything else. In this article, I um, like I say, I link to my review of Doggy Dan, and I tell you everything that's in his website. I also give you a link to um, get some testimonials, see what other people are saying about Doggy Dan. Um, so I do hope that this has helped. I would love it if you would comment below and uh, let me know how you make out with this. Uh, maybe let me know what exactly is your dog doing that brought you to this video. And um, let me know how you do with the Doggy Dan training and how you do with the articles I've given you and learning about the pack leader thing and trying some of these ideas. Please come back and share, not only with me, but for anybody watching this video now or in the future, you know, let's all work together and help each other. All right. Um, I donate to animal charities. If you've been here before, you know this. Um, I am an affiliate for some, uh, not all, but some of the products and services that I recommend on my website. Doggy Dan is one of them. I am an affiliate for Doggy Dan. I do get a small commission if you sign up and pay for his program. Um, what I do is I research all different issues and I compare different companies and then whatever one I want to recommend, that's the one I'll apply to be an affiliate for and then I'll recommend recommend that product or service um, on my website and I earn a commission and this is how I do this for a living I do this for a living and that's how I do it now what I do is I donate 10% of all of those commissions that I earn on my peoplelovinganimals.com website and also this YouTube channel to animal charities and I'm going to give you the link if you go to the home page of my website you'll see a list of the um, animal charities that I donate to so for that reason I'm going to ask you to please go ahead and share this video please share this uh, YouTube channel and my website please drop a link to peoplelovinganimals.com on your social media send it out to your friends um, anybody that you know who has um, a dog or a cat or people who just love animals in general because it all um, it all helps animals um, there's so much information I've been doing this since 2015 so I have a ton of articles and videos all you know all geared toward helping people with their dog and their cat and like I say any purchases that are made with any of my links I donate 10% of the commission that I earn to animal charities so 
I hope so much that today's video was uh, helpful. I appreciate so much um, that you've come and you've tuned in to watch my video. I would love it if you would support the channel by subscribing. You can also make a donation to peoplelovinganimals.com. I'll give you a link in the description box. And don't don't forget to go ahead and subscribe to the channel and subscribe to the YouTube or to the email list for dog lovers so that you can get more information. I do, by the way, also have an email list for cat lovers. If you go to the website, you'll see that too. And like I say, I'm going to give you a link to this article and I'm going to give you a link to Doggy Dan in the description box. So again, thank you so much for joining me. Good luck with your dog. Please come back and report. Let us know how you did. Again, my name is Deborah, and my website is peoplelovinganimals.com. Thanks again. Bye-bye.